We got a problem here, and it's more than just Alvin screaming Punisher. When life begins to suck, who's reporting it? Luckily, you got two friends who you won't forget. Coming live, Alvin and friend on survival. Laughing nonstop, case drops on a cycle. Louder than intrusive thoughts off an iPhone. How do you make the world seem bright with the lights off? AFs, it might as well stay up. Lies being told like that dinosaur BS. Magnifying glass to the ground if they don't see us. Having the time, roasting your favorite pizza. Bougie ain't an option, it's the way. Take it to the grave, add moving to the place. You already know when they take the case. Laugh the pain away, it's affirmative murder. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Affirmative Murder, the Equal Opportunity True Crime Comedy Podcast. I'm Alvin Williams, joined as always by my partner in true crime, Francel Evans. I, I mean, I mean, we just talked about. <laughs> oh yeah, it's right in a minute, Mr. Postman. Yeah, man, I'm the mailman. Can't you tell, man? Gonna post on. What up, hey man? I thought that you was. I thought. I thought that you was gonna just put it in post. That's not what we did last week. It doesn't matter. Hey, but man. You put, but you put the thing in post. You put the I intro. put the music in. You hit the, you hit the button last week. This just happened last week. I'm not used anyway, to Anyway. Hey, man. What's going on, man? How's it going? I'm doing great, man. How about how about yourself? What is... Uh, I, it's been hot. You know, the weather is kind of... It's been terrible lately. I'm terribly and, hot, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I've called you to make sure you are are also at work, but I'm at work. Because uh-huh. I want to be dealing with not this. to call me not call me to make sure I'm safe. Call me to make sure I'm also suffering the way that you're <laughs> yeah, suffering. Is what 100%. you do. Yes, yes. yes <laughs> but make sure you're yeah, outside, yes. going through what I'm going through, and mm-hmm. that makes my day go by so much better. When I go, all right, well, I'm not the only one out here suffering. That's a sick In thing me. that you have inside of you, and I hope that you get it taken care of someday. But um, <laughs> yeah, man, it's been it's been really hot. It's been it's been terribly hot. But you know, it is what it is. I'm um just. I think we're at the point of any week now, not day, but we're any week now, a baby will be in the world. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, water break inducing, I don't know, but like it's any, it's any week now. We how was it in, how was home the, stretch? How was it in household? Is it some excitement? I mean, what is it? Definitely excitement. She's hot. Like, I mean, okay. there's air conditioning on. She's just like constantly hot, so she can't really cool off. Um, but just like the thoughts of running through my head, I wanted to ask you, like, I mean, in that room, yeah, I've never been in that room, man. I don't know, like, what did you? What do you do? Did you look? I have multiple questions. Did you look? Okay. Where were you? Were you up top by hers, just supporting? Did you catch any of the kids? <laughs> like, what? What was your situation? Uh, I just would like a rundown from that from that angle. Yeah, um, excitement, adrenaline, everything is is kind of um, it's. I would say it's very it's a very long experience. Like it's when they go, oh yeah, I was in I was going through um what is it? It was twenty six um, hours yeah, of labor. It was like yeah. Fifteen hours. Yeah, like that's but that's not from when you're at the house, but that's from like at home when the water breaks up until the child is born. So like the contractions from tip come. To tail, right, the, the whole contract, process. Right. The contractions come and that's that's that I think the contraction part was probably the most scariest part for me because like she's going through something where it's like it's from the beginning, it's every 20 minutes or something like that. And then it's every five minutes. And then as they get closer, that's how you know it's, it's, about, it's about time. But then it's like everything you guys talking and boom, boom, boom. And then it's contrasting. Come, then it's like, oh, she's going through something. And you got to kind of be there and support. And then it goes away. And then everything's back to normal for a little bit. Right. So that part, that part was kind of crazy. Because like, you're like, what do I? What do you do? What do I, <laughs> what do, I do? But um, just be there to kind of just, you know, rub on the head, give some water and stuff like that. And. Cause it's not really much you guys do. It's just it's all part of the, the having a child. That's it's all part of it. Yeah. And then being and like when Sophie both when both came out, I was at the I saw both of them come out. I just wanted to see. It's nuts, absolutely nuts. It's scary too because they come out and they're not breathing sometimes, and you gotta wait for that moment to. You're holding your breath. Yeah. And then they that cry comes out and you go. It's a it's a just it's a huge relief of like okay everything is everything is fine right when sophie came out she had troubles coming out because of um steph is like her her pelvis bone or something was like they had to twist her out oh wow had to, like, they had to do like some type of maneuver and then that was right that was scary they come out purple and you go look what the f-, you know and then the cry comes and everything is fine but yeah man i was right there i was looking because you have to be when you go to cut the umbilical cord you gotta i'm, I'm already there so i'm already ready Right, I'm already ready. So I'm already there. But yeah, man, you just—it's crazy, man. It's 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 nuts to see a child I keep, come I keep, out. 
I think that's what I'm, I'm thinking about. Like, do I want to look? Do I yeah. want to get called down when it's right, when it's time? Like, come cut the thing. Or do yeah. I want to be right there front and center to see the show fully? Yeah, because you you can see. And even if you're at the top where, like, holding her hand, you can still see. Yeah, but, like, that coming around over the shoulder, the over POV the shoulder. of the doctor's shoulder, as opposed to over the shoulder I, of I wasn't, girl. No, that's not what I was doing. They don't, I don't think they okay. will let you be behind. Oh, okay, I don't think okay. she will, will want you to be behind the, the right. fucking doctor. So you, right, yeah, you're on yeah. her side, you can kind of see everything. And From the top, I'm sure you can see the baby coming out. Right, right. Uh, and then but you see com- seeing the baby coming out... Yeah, like straight, I, right on. I see what you say. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, Did it's, you do that? It's still the same. No, I wasn't like. Yeah, I was Were down you? there at the where the legs are. I'm like, I'm looking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking. So baby comes out, and then the um the bag, the placenta, the placenta, the placenta comes the out. Bag. <laughs> the placenta comes out. <laughs> the after bag that, is crazy. It's not that big of a deal. Just just a bag. It's a bag of uh, life. That's all. A bag of life. <laughs> a bag of life in it. Yeah, yeah. Because it follows behind the child, man. That's what it brings. That's that's the baggage you come in the world. They say you come in the world with nothing. You come in, the child comes in with the, a placenta. Get some luggage. That's what the, the luggage. Yeah. That's what the child comes in. The, the Pluey. You Palooie. come in with the Pluey bag. The Pluey bag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, those are the kind of thoughts I'm having as far yeah, as man. like the, the kids' first entry into the world, all this pain and confusion and light. Yeah. Just, I'm yeah. thinking of that, processing that. Um, but I'm excited. I'm nervous. But yeah, that's where we're at. Like, I mean, it's any, it's any week now for sure. It's any yeah, day man. now, any week now. Whatever you do, just, I know we, I know, I know you and I really don't play games. Don't bring your Xbox to the, to the room. Oh, just, yeah. <laughs> crazy shit like It's time that. to lock in. You know what I'm It's like, what are you got? I might have some Tetris on my phone or something like that. Some. I'm not going to bring the whole set oh, bring, headphone, no, if, you bring a little, if you bring a little Nintendo Switch or something, that's fine. Yeah. Don't, why are you bringing the whole system? <laughs> bringing the whole what setup? What are we talking about here? <laughs> No, I'm trying. I'm trying to get this raid done. I'm trying to, you know, my Elden Rings. Trying to, get, you know, I got me in the squad to hooking don't up tonight. Bring your, don't bring, I don't care how much of a game, how much she supports you. Do not bring your system to. Yeah, keep to the, the room. keep the Xbox home. Also, are we on this? What is his? He has a nickname. What is his nickname? Are you asking? You, wanna, you really want to know? Are you asking? I, well, there's I two. Know. Okay, well, so, okay, okay. Oh, this is, oh, this is like, oh, I feel like a uh, Kardashian or something like that. Oh, so this official name announcement. Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my son's name is, uh, will be, not is, will be Oliver okay. Jude Williams. Right. Okay. The Oliver first. Jude Williams, the first. Now, what is so his? So we got Ollie, right? Ollie, okay. Th- and then, listen, controversial. I get it. I get it. He doesn't, he doesn't own this. No. There's basketball players that I know people that have this name. Yes, but that that would be OJ. OJ. So what is, what, be, what is the name you gonna? I, what's the name you gonna call him? You guys. I'm gonna the, call him Ollie as a cute little baby, but I don't know. As he gets a little older, something that sounds like a, again, not to uh, not to be distasteful, but I mean, if he wants to play sports, that sounds better than Ollie. You know, like yeah. it just it sounds a little, it's a little flashier, it's a little slicker. You know, but I, Oliver, I like Oliver as it is. You know, I, yeah. I also think it's a dope name just as it stands alone, but. Ollie would be the nickname, like cute little three year old, two year old Ollie. And then a grown man, a grown man named OJ is, you know, uh, is a thing. And, uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to figure, I've been trying to, I've been brainstorming on, on what, what does Uncle Fran call me? Cause my, cause my, um, my dad's best friend calls me by my middle name. Right. Nobody calls me by Nobody him, calls he, you by Because he hates my name. He like, I don't like I don't know <laughs> sure. why you guys name. So he calls me Jonathan. That's what he calls me. So yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, I need to think of something to call him. He knows So that would be Jude. It's just So that would be, be Jude. Um so I think that I might be call him Jay. I think it might just be Jude, man. Yeah, that could be Jude. Yeah. I think that I come up with something. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. But uh yeah, that's Oliver Jude Williams the first is my boy's name. But What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to get into some fucked up shit. So stick around. Affirmative Murder is brought to you by Hormone Harmony. Are you going through menopause or maybe perimenopause? I've spoken to some of the most powerful women in my life who are experiencing menopause, and they tell me how difficult it is to find comfort in their own bodies. And I've been recommending Hormone Harmony to them all. Hormone Harmony is an all-in-one hormonal balancing solution for women of all ages. Hormone Harmony isn't just a supplement for women going through perimenopause, menopause, or postmenopause. It's become a phenomenon. Women cannot stop talking about it all over social media. Happy Mammoth, the company that created Hormone Harmony, is dedicated to making women's lives easier. And that means using only science-backed ingredients that have been proven to work for women. 
They make no compromise when it comes to quality, and it shows. For a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code AMP at checkout. That's happymammoth.com, and use the code AMP for 15% off today. Affirmative Murder is brought to you by Kickoff. Have you ever gone up to a vending machine and seen a Rice Krispie Treat hanging by the edge of its life? And you know that if you buy the Rice Krispie Treat behind that, you'll have become a vending machine master, pulling off the two-for-one special, the ultimate beating of the system. That is until Kickoff came into existence. When it comes time to buy a home, a car, or find a new apartment, a bad credit score can be a big roadblock. But Kickoff found a way to beat the system with a fast and easy way to build credit up safely each month. Sign up for a monthly plan in minutes and start building credit right away for as low as five bucks. Listen, folks, credit is complicated. But one thing I know for sure about it is that a good score is necessary in life. You can use AutoPay to build your credit while you sleep and never have to worry about missing a payment. So if your credit score could use a little TLC, which who's couldn't these days, join the over a million people who are building their credit with Kickoff right now. Get your first month for a dollar off at getkickoff.com slash AMP today. That's kickoff at get K-I-K-O-F-F dot com slash A M as in man, my credit's fantastic. P. This special offer applies to new kickoff premium customers for their first month only and is subject to approval and only available on getkickoff.com slash AMP. Average impact of 30 point increase in the first month is based on the Equifax Vantage Score 3.0 changes for kickoff premium customers with starting credit score below 600 who made their first on-time payment between January 2021 and March 2024. Payment and credit activity outside kickoff can have an impact on your credit. Terms and conditions may apply. Offer subject to change. Individual results may vary. And we are back, Fran. We have an interesting cold case this week, a missing person yeah, story this week. This is a, um, a wild one. Um, I think yes. I saw this on one of those 25 true crime stories you haven't heard of lists, I think is where I first saw this. Okay. And I started diving into it, and I went, oh, wow, this is this gets deep. Um, so yeah. this week, our affirmative murder is the story of Selena Mays. Absolutely wild ride. Before we get into a friend, what are your thoughts? I know you always are interested in cold cases and, you know, the yeah, mystery man. around them. I love a good cold case, but I don't know if this is technically a cold case. Yes. I don't think it's a cold case. Mm. I think they, we know who. Yeah, we, we have an idea of what happened. We just don't but know. We just don't have a resolution. Obviously. Right. Can't put your finger on it, but I think we. We can guess. It's clear of like, it's like, we, we know, we know it was that yeah. person. And. Or somebody, somebody it, adjacent, if not that person, somebody adjacent to that person. Yeah, but this being the cold case and then has some involvement with, like, church. Yeah. I go, ah, Got a little culty. Got a little culty. Uh, yeah, I go like, I go like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like these type of stuff. <laughs> I go, I don't like these type of stuff. Got stories. a little culty. So, you know, my yeah, ears perked just, up. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, what? I go, man. Yeah, I go. This a is weird, gross. obscure this church is... with a, a tight following that doesn't talk to anybody outside the church. Count me yeah. in. I don't like yeah. it. I don't like it. Uh, um, yeah, let's get into it though. So on Sunday, December fifteenth, nineteen ninety six, in Willingboro, New Jersey, twelve year old Selena Mays went through her nightly routine just like any other night. She kissed her family good night. She put her dishes in the sink. She had some ice cream before bed, and then she turned up and went upstairs to go to sleep. According to her family, it had been a perfectly normal evening and nothing about her behavior had seemed suspicious. However, that very night, Selena vanished and has never been seen again. To make this case even more sad and disturbing, the 12-year-old girl was nine months pregnant. She was due to give birth in just a couple of weeks. She had insisted on keeping the father's identity a secret, and some of her family members have speculated that the young girl may have run away uh, so that the paternity test could not be performed on her baby. Mm -hmm. Now, again, keep in mind, she was 12 years old, so she was not aware of the fact that you can't perform a paternity test without the father. So they wouldn't have been able to know right. who the father was just because you had the baby. So, you know, there's that. But again, she's 12 years old. She shouldn't have been having a baby. But we'll either get, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So. Selena's family structure was curated in a way where she had very little access to the outside world, which narrowed, the, which narrowed down the suspects to those that were in her small world. You know, because if she doesn't see people, there's no boy at the school or she doesn't go to school. She goes to school at the yeah. church. So 
it really is like who who could be who could have had interactions with her to have even been involved in this and that list is very short there are people who believe she was kidnapped possibly by someone in her own family and to this day police suspect that the church selena's family attended may have played a role in her disappearance now, uh, Fran, if the theory I've proposed to you seems a little crazy to you or to anybody out there, I guess it's also possible she woke up one night and was like, I'm out of here, nine months pregnant in December, and just ran away on her, of her own volition. I guess that's also possible if we're not trying to go down any kind of weird conspiracy church rabbit hole. I guess that's also yeah. possible, too. I, I mean, it, it could be. It could, well, based, I think after, this, after we get through the story, you can go, I can see that being a possibility. And whoever this person is that she got pregnant by, you know, persuaded her to do something or tricked her into, you know, sure, some shit where like something, some, some definitely. Went I don't, down. I don't see a world. Obviously, but I don't think, I don't think she was pulled out of her bed physically mm, and dragged out of the window. You don't. That I don't think happened. Yeah, I was being a little facetious. I'm not saying that she went and ran, down, ran away okay, like by herself. It. But she walked out. Yeah. You're saying you think she walked out yes. on her own. Because of one reason, when 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 it come up, I'll mention that reason. But I think she did it on her. Okay, own. yeah. Because my whole thing is like my difficulty in that one, as far as when you when you clear up, is like you're not saying she just got up and like with no just off her own reason, she just ran away. Right. Because I go right. I'm currently living with an eight and a half month pregnant woman right now, adult. You've lived with a yeah. a nine month pregnant woman twice. Um, yeah. She doesn't have much desire to go like go go. And how far would she get? You know what I mean? That's right. my whole thing is like, yeah. even if she was to go like, I'm out of here, an adult version of that would be, you don't have your car. It's cold outside. You can't, dri yeah, you can't, right. can't drive. Right. Like you don't have any money like to make you 12. But as an adult to make it, I go, okay, my girlfriend is running away from home as an adult. Yeah. No car. You don't have your credit cards or money. And it's cold as shit outside. I go, how right. far would she get? Now make her 12. How, you know, I go, Walking, Walk, in walking in December. No, yeah, like nowhere else to go. No, no other friends you would think because nine months pregnant. Not, I mean, you're about to nine pop. months pregnant. So I go. <laughs> she definitely didn't just go and run away. Right. So I I agree with that as far as if she could have just gotten up because she was brainwashed or manipulated by an adult who take who's been taking advantage of her. That's right. fully possible. Exactly. But yeah. her of her her own plan of like I'm out of here. This house sucks. It's like even if you think that your feet are swollen. Yeah. You're nine months pregnant. Like you're gonna, you'll figure it out after the baby. After the not, baby comes, not at nine months in December. Three months right. in, where you go like, I already can tell this is not going to be. People are not going to take this well. When it's yeah, like, then I'll see her running away at twelve years. I I can see that happen. I can see that being for sure. more of a possibility. Absolutely. So Selena was born on May twenty eighth, nineteen eighty four, in Miami, Florida, to her parents C J Mays and Lynn Vital. Two years after Selena was born, the family relocated to New Jersey for a fresh start. Her father, CJ, had a drug and alcohol addiction with a record of domestic violence, and her mother, Lynn, was an exotic dancer and also had a drug addiction. Selena's parents were never married, but they separated after a couple of years uh, into moving to New Jersey. They went through a hellish custody battle, leaving Lynn to be a single mother, raising Selena on her own. Eventually, Lynn got herself sober and found a job as a custodian at a local school. Lynn found her stride, and she was providing for her child, and Selena was doing well at school and made friends in the process. So life is going well. They she turned held, everything around. Arms. Yeah, yeah, she held, yeah, she held it down. She, 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 she got on her feet. She beat a drug habit. She went and found a day job, and, it, her, and Selena's now adapting well, meeting friends and everything, and, and things are going well. Her father, CJ ended up relocating just nine miles away and became a radical Christian under his sister, Reverend Sarita Smith, who owned her own church. CJ dedicated most of his time to the church by working as the accountant and a member of the congregation. Lynn did not allow CJ to see Selena. Now, so even with him kind of, you know, doing the same thing that she did. Uh, right. Allegedly cleaning up his life, becoming cleaning a up, church right. So Be, either kicking had, drugs. Yeah. 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 Is, he, is either they had, maybe he's, maybe he, maybe it's all bullshit, but she was like, the mom was like, I really know what you're up to. Yeah. And you're not seeing right. my child. Or yeah. it was just like, they just don't, they just don't like each other. She was like, no. It could happening. be that. 
right? Yeah. So that's fully possible. Both the both of those things are as equally possible as the other. Right. Yeah. Now, CJ has alluded to um Lynn's family not being accepting of him because he was black. But then some have alluded to it being about the church. So those are two different reasons. He's and if it is about the church, if you go Lynn isn't racist <laughs> and it's about the church, then she goes, yeah. or not Lynn isn't racist, her family. Right. If you go Lynn's family's not racist, let's go to the church angle. If she knows about his sister, Sarita. And the church. And yeah. the church. And you go, mm-hmm. oh, that's not yep. a real church. Y'all, that's weird shit going yep. on. Like, I'm not yeah. having my child around that. Yeah. Then you then you take off, you take off the petty custody battle shit of it and you just go, that might have been the best decision, especially we're going to say that now, and then yeah. we're going to finish the story, obviously. Right. So we're going to say now Lynn, in hindsight, might have been like, I don't want my child around that church that you go yeah. to because I've also heard they, some things. Right. But they, you got to remember, they also dated as well. They, you know all the all the secret shit. You know all I the know tea your sister. Some shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know all the tea, and then she was like, and then he went and kind of, you know, went into that circle, and she was like, Fuck that! I know. Yeah. It's, I know your what sister goes down. Sarita, who you've told me on countless occasions, is a exactly. con artist. You know, you, you never know what she don't might... know that. <laughs> She's like, N- I'm good or not. Yeah, I'm gonna hang you, and do what we you used to. Black. We used to. We Come used on, to bang rock in an alley or whatever they used to do. I don't know. We used to talk shit about them. We used to. That's what I'm saying. Like, you used to talk <laughs> shit about your sister. She's not really a Christian. We don't know what they said to each other. Right. So now we're just going. Might so you can't just go. Some people said it might have been about the church. We don't know what Lynn knew about the church. Right. From CJ. Yeah. So we can't just say the parents might have been racist because that's possible too. I'm not going. We can't just take that off the table. That's true. And act like we don't know plenty of stories in the world of like people had a biracial, interracial relationship and everything. We like each other, but then I found out through this process that my mom is racist. Yeah. Or my dad is racist, or both my parents, and they were like, we don't know. But who makes the final decision to see just for him to see the child? Though the mom makes. makes Lynn. That the mom makes the decision. Yeah. So it's not about. Oh, if the family's not accepting, it's like, okay, well, you're not coming to my family's house. You're going to come to my house to see our kid. Right. And I don't want you to come to my house to see our kid. So that's her decision. Again, having said all that, call me judgmental, but it could be also the fact that, you know, because she turned her life around and the last time she saw CJ, he was a drug addicted, a drug addicted, domestically violent person. They were in a domestically violent relationship together, but mm-hmm. she's now cleaned up her act, and that's the last time she saw CJ. Maybe that played a role in it too. Yeah, it's like I don't know if I believe that you cleaned up your act. I I cleaned up my act, but I don't know if I believe you cleaned up your act. And you're at this weird church, so it could be a compounding amount of factors. Now, just eight years after moving to New Jersey, Lynn died of an aneurysm in 1994. Mm. At this time, Selena was only 10 years old. So that is, that is like, boom, overnight, all of a sudden. Yeah. Your kid, your mom, who has turned her life around, you guys are living a great life in a, in a state, getting comfortable, and she just is, she's dead. That's crazy. And, and that's such a formative time in your life, too. So once Lynn passed away, Selena was taken in by her mother's family. Selena was 10 years old, and on top of puberty, developing complex feelings, and socializing with kids, she now had to process the death of a parent yep. and the adjustment of being under a new roof, which I'm sure co- all those com- combinations of things are just trouble and turbulent on a 10 year old brain. You know, even like just, just the adjusting and, and processing the death of a parent and your a new lifestyle. And also uh, there was also uh, the back and forth stress of the custody battle between CJ's family and Lynn's family. Mm-hmm. Uh, CJ told the courts that he became sober with no more domestic abuse um, and no more drug and alcohol addiction. And he got married and he found religion and he did all these things for his betterment, which would, which made him in his words, a more ideal and uh, uh, a more ideal fit as a, uh, as a parent guardian uh, for Selena and her maternal family or, or, it made her it made him a better fit for Selena than her maternal family, her maternal family, which would be her mm-hmm. mom's family. I wonder why. Um, yeah, I would also say that probably there's a factor in there that you can't take to court, but uh Selena was biracial. Mm. Her level of comfort in an all white house now, you know, like with new family who aren't her aren't her mom who don't know her and don't know how to relate to her maybe at a, some kind of base level. And so she might feel like an outcast in that household. 
So that might be hard too. Not to say that she inherently would be more comfortable in a black family household, but right, it, at least her dad, at least it's like her, your, it's your dad, you're with a parent. I get that. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm not saying that's for, that for a fact, but I'm just saying that's also something to consider that may be swirling around in her brain too. Of yeah. like, I don't know how to adjust in this to these people. I, I know them, but I, I don't, now I live with them and they're responsible for me and they don't know how to do, they don't know how to do my hair. They don't know how to, you know, those things. Yeah. But with the, I understand Selena being only 10 years old, but I want to, I want to know why, obviously she's a minor, but why don't kids have a say, have a, have some type of input on mm. where they would want to go and where they would feel comfortable. Because if, if there's been conversations with her mom about his side of family and she's more comfortable with her mom's side of family and they go to court, I feel like the child should also be asked because that's, that's, I feel like that's life. more important than anything. It's, it's their life. And then how, who they live around, how they groom, how they grow up and how shit is, is people being treated in under each household. I feel like that plays a huge part. And I think the kid, should also have some sort of say or, you know, some type of input of being like, where would you feel more comfortable? Who do you trust more for you to live with? It's a minor, right? And that, right. and their, their, their desires and, and wants change from moment to moment. So. But then you have a stranger. I, I mean, like it's the judge, yeah. but you still have a stranger picking. Making the decision. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one because it's like, you have two kids and if, you know, if, and you and your wife separated, it's like, you wouldn't want to leave. Would you? Would you be comfortable leaving that decision up to the kids? If 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 it's my if it's what do you mean if like if it's whether it's fifty fifty who live who gets full t- if like let's say both of you want full time, like right, you I both you. want it so bad, yeah. And you know the you guys can't come to an agreement, negotiations or whatever with the judge, and you go all right. Well, let's just leave it up to the what do the kids want you trust the answer that comes out of your kid's mouth in that moment that the judge asks, like, who would you want to live with the most, the most yeah. of the time? Yeah. You think, think that that should make, be made by I the kid? They, you, they, or they, they they, make, they, at least it should matter. It should matter. It definitely should matter. I think they would go, they would pick their mom for sure. They would pick, but they would be, we'd go with dad on the weekend. It, it would be something. Right. It, it wouldn't would just be, be like, we never want to see him again. But like yeah. the kid never picks the dad. Then the, 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 the kid doesn't pick the dad. The mom would that have never to be, happens. Yeah, the mom would <laughs> Unless have to the be. mom is a terrible human being. The kids yeah. never pick. they always going to pick mom. doesn't matter if you're the best dad in the world. They're going to pick mom. It's just, that's a different connection that they have, moms and kids. They're always going to pick the mom. So I wouldn't yeah. even be upset for them to go, oh, no, we'll go with mom. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would go, okay, I would get that. Because I love my dad. If my mom was still alive, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going mom's house. Yeah. That's not, there's no... That doesn't mean I That's hate not my a slight dad. to the, like, yeah. It's not a slight to the dad. It's just like no, I'm, uh, I would. And in this I situation, I would agree with you more because this is a decision on your parent or your grandparent. But keep in right. mind, CJ started a whole new life. He has a new wife and I get that. Sure, so the, sure. it might look appealing. So yeah. we don't know. But but I feel like but then these systems fail kids most some most times or for sure. Where it's like putting them back in terrible if, situations and right, households. You put them or as a uh, going to a, a, a place and people they around they don't have. No, they just know their dad who hasn't yes. even been around because he's been, you know, it took him a while to get his shit together. Mm-hmm. It need to be somewhere it's like, okay, if I'm a judge, I would go, obviously this may not be a real thing, but go like, okay, well you spend 50% here. You spend 50% with your dads. We meet again in a year. Yeah. You have another type of trial or whatever you want to call it. And you go, okay, how was it? And they, she would go, she, let her, let them make the decision. Like I'd rather go. I like that. Because it's like listen to listen to what they don't want more listen to what they don't want more so than being like where would you have more fun where would you rather go it's like did you like living there yeah and that should be a factor like yeah. you're saying if 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 it, she should she should be brought to court and I'm not saying that she wasn't I don't know all the details of the of right. the of the custody hearing but if she's brought to the court and it goes do you like living with your mom's family and she goes no they don't really feed me like those things should matter yeah. like she, her voice 100%. should matter in that situation yes. I agree, I agree with that it's but. I, I got so caught up on like where would they rather go? It's like, what do they think about where they are? <laughs> yeah, shouldn't like, absolutely matter. Yeah, like yeah, I feel like that should play a huge part. You just putting these kids and all right, well, that's the dad. It's like he's the dad, so I'll just give him custody. You go there yeah. and it's like this place. Thirty is a day shit. trial. Let's come back in thirty days and yeah, let's ask. There yeah. you go, because yeah. we're gonna get into it. 
I'm sure she would go back and go like, hell no. Get yeah. me out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we will absolutely get into it. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and dive back in. So CJ ended up winning the battle and gained full custody of Selena. She ended up moving into a communal family home with CJ, several of his family members, and some of the church members as well. They were like living in a Hey Arnold house. So a guy that used to be a musician in this room, <laughs> a, yeah. a, bl- a blind man, a, a Polish family. You're like, what the, what the fuck is this? So this is where Selena spent all of her time. Not most of her time, all of her time. This would be a huge transition for Selena because the home that she that was she was now living in was packed with so many different people. She never got to leave because they did church there, school there. They didn't let them talk to people outside of the church lifestyle. Like it was yeah. this. So you're already in this crammed house, and it's the only place that you get to go for all of your activities. Right. That's not. Doesn't end well, man. No, that's not fun. That's not fun at all. It's like, hey, man, do you like this gym that you go to? Nah, it's cheap though, so I, I'm cool with it. Okay, cool. Well, now this is your now your job, your house. This is where yeah, you, you go to the in. gym, extracurricular activities. You never leave this place. It's like, damn, I didn't even really like it just for the one thing that I needed for. <laughs> now I'm here all the time for everything. I got them. So, um. CJ pulled Selena out of the New Jersey pub, the New Jersey public school system and transitioned her into being homeschooled at the church, focusing heavily on the teachings of the church and limiting her, so, her social interactions with people who weren't members. So just this is that was a long way of saying indoctrination and brainwashing. Right. So uh, the communal home where Selena was now spending all of her time was two stories and had four bedrooms and three bathrooms. It is believed that between 12 and 15 people were occupying this home in December of 1996. That's too small. That's way too That's small. Nuts. We're talking about rooms with four beds in it. That's nuts. Fuck, yeah, I, insane. People sharing beds. It, it, nuts. 15 people in a four-bedroom home is insane. Just basic division. You go four divided by 12. That's three people to a room. Yeah. But now you got this little... 12 and between 12 and 15. So you got three possibles at any given time. You got between 12 and that between 12 and 15. That's three extra people. So now you're talking three to four people per room. Yeah. You like 17 on a, on a bump bed. Yeah. yeah. It's insane, bro. And the, <laughs> the age variations weren't cool. Cause right. you got kids, adults, yeah. adult strangers sleeping with kids, married couples in the same room as teenagers. It's all this weird, weird man. hormones weird. and ages and, 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 and puberty and all. It just, you need privacy at this age. At any age, you need privacy. But it's like, you hear shit like this, and you go, that's weird. It's like, and you guys can only talk, like, how do you, you guys can only talk to each other? No, that 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 doesn't end well at all. Yeah. No. This, is, this is a cult. You know, but not officially, but this is very, it's very cult-like. The church that was the pillar of CJ's life, and by proxy, Selena's, was run by his sister, Reverend Sarita Smith. Um, Church was every Sunday, and it was an all-day experience. The congregation consisted of some 50 to 60 devoted members that were mainly extended families, and everyone was somehow connected because it was a cult. Uh, The church was a tightly knit community, extremely devoted, and structured. Most of the members not only worshipped at the church, but worked there or supported the church or the congregation financially um, and socialized only with members within their church and were homeschooled there. And most of the members lived in homes that were affiliated with the church, causing dozens to live under one roof. So it wasn't just one house that had 12 to 15 members. The 60 members were spread out about in about four houses. Yeah. So this every house that was affiliated with the church had like 12 to 15 people living it in was, it. This wasn't a damn church. Nobody outside of the family and you know friends no, yeah. went to this, this was church. a cult this was a cult and this then was a cult. the biggest red flag when you're talking about you guys live in a compound or something? right what exactly so that that's a bit that's a big red flag to all them these these little houses these little weird waco yeah, houses in the end of a cul-de-sac and it's just like yeah so this, oh, yeah, this, those this, are the that's the that's that one fan that's that one churches they all live in those houses so yeah. that's red flag number one red flag number two is whenever i start hearing Oh, they volunteered at the church, or they worked at the church, or they donated no money work. to the church. It's like, oh, that's la- that's slave labor. Yeah, that's no work. Yeah, you worked there. Was he paying? Were they paying you? Well, no, they, no. We right. got we this get paid in eternal blessings and, and gratitude from the Father <laughs> of High. It's like that's slavery. So yeah. 
whenever there's slave labor and people all living in one house under one roof, polygamy, weird arrangements. Weird shit happens, like, man. This is, weird shit. Just keep it a book. Weird shit happens. And it's like, this is nasty and gross. Doesn't age is like, oh, it's, just, it's just gross, man. I, I don't even like touching on shit like that because I'm like, this is just. Yeah. Nah. It's awful. It's, it, and it's awful. And there's so many kids involved. That we just happen to be telling the story of Selena Mays today, but yeah. who knows what other and also not who knows there. We'll, we'll get into it. I don't want to jump. Yeah. Much. I don't want to jump in too much. But Selena's home housed around fifteen people. Amongst those occupants were their reverend Sarita, her husband, five of their children, their grandchildren, and even members who were not blood related but a part of the congregation. Everything that went on in the, in the lives of the members and inside and outside of the church doors, Reverend Sarita had to have knowledge of and required consent from her. So she's all up in everybody's business and is also dictating. At this time, Selena was under strict rules with a virtually non-existent social life compared to what she had had when she was living with her mother when she was alive. She was going to school. She was making friends. She was thriving. And now she can't leave her home and she can only, can only talk to people who go to this church. So, it was home, church, and school. All at the church. All at the church. Yeah, all at the church. This, <laughs> this, this church, church. This church wore church, many church, hats. Church. Yeah. This church was giving uh, multifaceted. <laughs> it was giving verse. She, this, this, this church was doing it all. Okay? This church, this church was wearing, one day she had a little uh, ruler, she, a little apple on her desk. Other day she would have a little Jesus Christ statue. Uh, then another day um, she's got fresh baked cookies on the table, aprons yeah. on. This church was doing it all. It was, I'm curious. You know. I'm curious. So where's the where's where's the money financially? Where's the money coming in from? From the congregation, whatever they have. Their so savings. Where, they are, where their, are they getting money from? They some of them work. Some of them work at the church for free. So some of them are slave labor, and then other the others keep their jobs, and then whatever money they get comes funneling back into the church. So you can have a job outside of the church. Yeah. Okay. Some people can. You got to have so enough there, people. So you probably do have. So those people, you probably lucky to have a social life outside of church. Then outside if, of yeah, the, if you, have, you, if you, you have, have a job, if you have a job. Okay. All right. So I'm like, how is it? How is the money? I don't. How does the money work? If everybody's just at the church all the Some time. Some people make money and bring it back to the church. Other people, okay, they go. You. you are responsible for so like building new wings on the outside. church, doing the plumbing, all those kind of things. You're if you're handy, you do all that work for free. Think about how much money you save. And think about the plumbing on the 15 people on three bathrooms in one house. Yeah. The pipes nice. are the pipes are bussing. Literally. <laughs> the pipes right. are bussing, bussing. And then you you got free labor coming to fix you the pipes. Overworking the pipes. You can't overwork pipes like that. No, you can't overwork. Never Too you can't people. overwork the pipes. I'm down with OPP, other people's pipes. So I go to other people's I if I was them, this is why I would open up the floor to letting <laughs> other people socialize with people outside the church, because you go to their house and shit. Yeah. Because 15 of us living in the house, go shit at their house. So, yeah, basically, Selena had no access to the world outside of her church. At age 11, a few months short of a year of living with her father uh, and the rest of her paternal family, Selena became pregnant. Within a year of living there. So, based on your, in your world, in your society, friend, this would have been squashed yep. immediately Selena. because a month in, you would have been like, hey, Selena, how do you yeah. like living there? It's 15 people. I don't really, I don't think, I think I want to go back to my Mima's house. Yeah. Also, there would have been a story of, her getting sexually assaulted before this happened. Yes, because it wasn't it like... Even got, yeah, it, it wouldn't even have got to that. Mm -hmm. This wasn't one incident that she ended up pregnant. This was a... Exactly. Yes, yes yep. which we will get into. So, the family claimed that they did everything that they could to try to find out who the father was. But she would say it was a 16-year-old boy who was not a member of the church. And she met him at Camden, at Camden New Jersey at a skating rink. She never provided any other information outside of that. Now, keep in mind, as we've already laid the foundation for, this girl's not allowed to go anywhere. Who's taking her to a skating rink outside of town? Um, when, when would she meet this boy? Like, it just, she does, she's not allowed to go anywhere. Right. So this is, like, kind of blatantly a lie. And also, it's not, this is a lie that she's not telling. This is a lie that people in the church are telling to news reporters because the girl ends up going missing. So it's not like we're, we're saying she was telling the world that this is who the father was. People are saying that we're in the church are saying she told us that. Yeah. And who are you to say that you believe her when you firsthand see the fact that none of these kids get to go to school, the playground, uh, gymboree, they don't get to do anything. So when would, she, when, would, when would she go to a skating rink and meet a boy? Right. 
for them to even be like, this is the public story that we're telling everybody of how she got pregnant. She said she met a boy at a skating rink in Camden, New Jersey. When? When would she? When? You guys don't let them go anywhere. They got to eat, you know, whatever rations y'all make in this house every night. You don't get to go out, go eat at a Ruby Tuesdays, a get some ambiance, yeah. go to a Cracker can Barrel, protect- see the sleds on the wall. Yeah, got to protect the... Gotta protect the uh... Cult they got on, whatever. Yeah, you can't church. let people be going out and getting meeting new people and getting the spell broken. Yeah. Well, I mean, they lied about her going to. I mean, like they, she met somebody at the. Oh yes, yes, yes. Because then yeah, yeah. the eyes we pointed to the inside right. of the house, yeah. which they already yeah. were. So they're just telling a lie. They're like, yeah, what? Like, okay, sure. Which <laughs> we'll we'll get into how this really unfolded. Selena made sure to take her personal vitamins. Um, she attended all of her doctor's appointments with her uh, obstetrician. And her obstetrician claimed that Selena never shared the true identity of her father with to her either. But what is clear is that this girl was very um, active and adamant about having the child. She wasn't. She was doing all the things necessary to keep a child. Yeah. So there was no intentions of not bringing this child to full term from a twelve-year-old mm-hmm. girl, which I mm-hmm. think is a. I don't think that's a decision a twelve-year-old makes on their own. Because right. they don't really know what to do, so there has to be some guidance there. But everybody in the church is saying we didn't want this, but but we're not we're but we're not we're not pro-abortion, but we just didn't we weren't happy about it. But we are going to do it. Feels like they were doing everything that they could to make sure that she had the child. Yeah, and they weren't going to let her not part. have the child. I think that plays a huge part in why she went missing. That's what I mean. Like she's twelve years old. I don't think I think if I think if a twelve year old ends up pregnant, if you tell them, hey. You're not having this kid. You're getting an abortion. They go, yes, sir. Like, yes, ma'am, mom, whatever. Like, that's it. They wouldn't go, no, I'm keeping this child, and I'm going to take the prenatal vitamins and go to all my OBGY appointments. And, like, that's not the the voice and the stance of a 12-year-old to me. I think a 12-year-old is like, I'm scared, I'm pregnant, and then the people around them, the adults go, okay, well, then, we're going to make sure you do all the right things that you need to do to be healthy because we don't believe in abortion in this house of 15 I people. Think, I think, and, my, and I mean, I think it went the other way. That's what I would say. What do, you th- what do you think? I think that her choice was like, I'm keeping this child, and then whatever happened with her was the reason came from her wanting to keep the child. It was just like, whatever, how she went missing, whoever had something to do with that, it came from her wanting to keep the child. They didn't want that to happen. That's why I believe why she went missing. Interesting. Maybe they, maybe they, obviously, maybe they went, you know, we don't believe in abortion or something like that, but she was like, no, I'm keeping this child. Yeah. Or maybe that was just like, I don't, it could be a number, it could be like a, this is, I she probably theory, was like, yeah, I want to keep this theory. child to get me, th- this may be my way of getting out of here or something like that. But the Proof, person evidence. who, mm-hmm. right, the person who has something to do with her missing, I'm 100% didn't want this to happen. And it's the reason why she went missing. At least I believe. Yeah. I have my theories. I'll keep them for when we get a little bit further in, but I'm not mad at that theory. So um, Selena was sexually assaulted and impregnated sometime in March 1996, right before her 12th birthday. In May, she was set to give birth at the age of 12 with a due date of December 29th, 1996, two weeks before she went missing. Selena was raped under the roof of a pro-life church, and the rape resulted in a pregnancy which she carried nearly to term. And we can go ahead and say that, you know, someone in the church is most likely the father based on what we've read so far. And that she protected this person to spare them from the repercussions and ridicule, which she, a child had to endure herself. And she most likely still grieving and processing the sudden death of her mother had to go through all of this as well. So, um, you know, basically, this girl's 12 years old. She's lying to people saying, she, you know, the father is a secret person. She knows who the father yeah. is. And we have an idea of who the father is, or we can guess who the father is, right? I wonder and, why, though. And she's protecting That's, this person. And while protecting this person, being judged by everybody in the church, oh, my God, you've, you've had sex and outside of marriage. And so she's protecting this a grown person from ridicule while receiving that very ridicule as a child. Yeah. Why? I wonder why, though, man. It has to be a reason. It could be as simple as he, because he asked her to. Threat? Threat, because he asked her to. He's groomed her and manipulated her into this, whatever she thinks is happening, and he asked her to. It could be as simple as that. Or it could be under under duress. It could have been a threat made. 
So, Selena disappeared on a Sunday night. This could be a red flag, but it could be nothing at all. But the evening church service on that Sunday was canceled. The next day, Yvette, who is Selena's stepmother and wife to CJ, her father, and mother to her half-sister, Nori, um, who was only four years old at the time, so she was four and Selena was 10, um, they were all preparing breakfast when they realized that Selena was missing. Nori w- went up to tell Selena breakfast was ready. Her parents sent her upstairs. And when there was no reply, Nori pulled back the covers to see pillows that were made to look like a body and there was no Selena there. Now, that is a very 12-year-old thing. And that's that was the, that's what I, the point I was talking about. I was going to point out when we got there. Like, for you to do that is something you do on your own. Mm-hmm. When you leave out, sneak out. I'm sure that's something you see on Boy Meets World. Days. Yeah, when you sneak out of your room, throw some pillows and shit under your bed, yeah. something like that, you laying down sleeping. I feel like that was. I think that's the touch of that. a child for sure. For sure. Of yeah. like, she's, being, she's been told, hey man, at 10 o'clock, come outside and we're going to go somewhere. And, she, and, and she's like, okay, well, let me make it look like. Yep. That just doesn't feel like the touch of an adult. Like, right. make, a, make a pillow body in, under the sheets. That's very. Yeah. Uh, Boy Meets World, very blossom, very diff- different strokes. It's very, uh, you know, it, it's very, it's just very, it's a very childlike thing to make pillows look like a body sleeping under the covers. Yeah. But yeah. we don't know that for sure, but this is what they say the morning looked like for them. This is not fact. This is secondhand information from her family who, at the very least, is in a cult. You know, like we can at least, or at the very least is in a, a church that I wouldn't be a member of. So I don't know how reliable their, their telling is, but what they're saying is the four-year-old pulled the covers back and there was just pillow body there. None of this could have, none of this could have happened. They could have all dragged her out of the house and thrown her in the trunk of a car. And here's further evidence as to how that's a possibility. Selena was not reported missing until the following day when CJ went and filed a missing persons report directly at the police station, which is weird. Instead of calling the police to come to you, you go down and that's weird. It tells me it, the reason I find it weird is because it tells me you, you don't want the police to come to your house to see what the living situation is. OK, I was I was I didn't I didn't think about that because I was that one confused me. But that makes sense. OK, yeah, that means, that's like, what I, I took. Like, how's from that, it? I was like, how is that weird? Because he went to the police station. But like, that's oh. what I took from okay. it. Yeah. It's like, why would if you go? All right. I think she's missing. Let's call the police. Let's get let's get the police here. Have them look at the scene. Let them see the bedroom because that's what they need to do. They need to see, they need to see what what the what the house looks like. Were these windows unlocked? You know, they go around asking questions. Do these windows yeah, open yeah. at night? True. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. What also was odd was that he failed to mention that Selena was nine months pregnant in the report. Mm. Now, whether that's shame or guilt, we don't know. But he did not mention it in the police report, which is crucial information. How don't you mention? Yeah, how don't you mention? That's because that's like oh. Check the hospitals. This is a more urgent situation. She yeah. she could have had a child any day now. She could be having a child any day now, so we have an idea of other places to look. Because you go 12-year-old, yeah. you go shelters, friends' houses. You don't think um, NICUs, emergency rooms. Right, right. You don't think they about them. They would have looked at them crazy. Right. For sure. Yeah, yeah. But it also is important information for the search, too. It all, obviously, that's that's why I say about the, ga- the, sh- the guilt and the shame. Because you go 12-year-old, your 12-year-old daughter's pregnant? But they need the information to find her, and that helps yeah. you look different places. But they don't, that's not what he's. I'm just doing what I, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, My I'm just coming to come this. down here and <laughs> make a report. They said if somebody's missing. You have to file a missing person report, look, or you look this bad. Looks crazy. So I'm gonna yeah. go ahead. And, I don't want to look guilty, so I'm gonna file a missing person report. Yep. So um, there was a search. Nori, who was four at the time, remember someone in the church telling her at that age, that the reason Selena was not there is because Selena slept around, got pregnant, and ran away. Which is a weird narrative to be pushing to a four-year-old. Four-year-old, yeah. Yeah. She's like, um, where's my sister? Well, your sister was a floozy, and she wanted to go run the streets, so she did. This is a (laughs) 12-year-old. So, um, so the church was really tight-lipped in relation to cooperating and making themselves available to the search party and the investigation, which looks terrible. You're trying to find this kid, and they're like, they 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 have they have no answers. They they're not answering any questions. They're not being a part of the search party, and all of this looks very suspicious. A young church member named Tawana would come out and allege that Selena confided in her 
that her 21-year-old cousin, Sean Smith, who was Reverend Sarita, Sarita Smith's son, had gotten her pregnant, which is a, a bomb. Hmm. A I wonder bomb. how old a Tawana is. Tawana was also like 12 or 13 years old. 12, okay. So At the okay. time. Uh, she didn't okay. come out until later. Right. But I, I mean, like, I was wondering what the age was for her to, even if that's true, for her to tell her that type of information, yeah. it had to be the same. Like, they had to have they were a relationship. Friends. It had to be the same age. Yeah. So what happened right. was at a point, Tawana was sent to live at the house with the 15 people by her parents because they wanted her to be more in the church. And so that's when that she, that's crazy. when her, that's when her and Selena became good friends because yeah. they were living together. Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. So this is where it gets, this is where it gets extra gross. So Sean was in the music business in some kind of stupid way. And allegedly, sure. Selena had a favorite artist and said that Sean had promised her an autograph and tickets. And in order to get them, she would have to perform different acts. I would put, if I had a million dollars, if I had a hundred million dollars, I would bet this dude has no type of pool in the music. He <laughs> works at an FYE or, you know, I mean, he works, you know what I'm saying? He saw Some a young work- girl who was very easily manipulated and he used that bullshit. That's that's crazy. To a kid, he probably is like, I can get you free CDs. And that's and nuts. that looks music business adjacent. Also, back in the day, you also got to keep in mind, this is the 90s. You could work at an FYE or a local record and tape, to- tape store, and Snoop Dogg might come in and do an a autograph signing at your store. So you could use that and say to a child, I'm in the music business. Lil That's Bow Wow's crazy. coming to my store to sign some CDs. Maybe I can get you a CD. It's just crazy. It's so manipulative and gross and the power dynamic and the age dynamic. It's all super wrong. But he tells this little girl, 12 years old, 11 years old at the time, that, hey, you know, I, I'm in the music business and I can get you some tickets and an autograph, but all I need you to do is some, do some stuff for me. What was that stuff? Um, it included engaging in sexual acts with him, amongst other things. And Tawana stated that she was not startled by this confession because she, too, was sexually assaulted by Sean starting at the age of 13. And he even had her get an abortion. So that's interesting, right? Hmm. Now, Tawana went into great detail about how Sean would enter into the room at night and take advantage of her, similar to the experience Selena claimed to have with Sean when she confided in Tawana. So he had an M.O. Yeah. And he was doing this all in his mother's church as the son of the leader of the church. So, you know, there's a different power dynamic. People trust you. You you have the direct ear of the leader of the church. He he was he was taking advantage of his position. It is also interesting that Tawana's telling the story. She says he made me get an abortion. Yeah, I was because hmm, Selena's his cousin. Why. Right. So I don't know why you wouldn't think about birth defects or whatever. But, it, but again, she's 12 years old. Maybe CJ, maybe CJ stepped in. He's a, he's a devout Christian now. He goes, no, 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 this family doesn't believe in abortions. And Sean Smith could have been in the background like, well, yeah, man, but she's 12, though. You, we probably should. No, 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 Sean. We don't believe in that. She's going to have this child. This is a blessing from God. And he's like, I don't know, though, because, you know, the, we, we, the water, I heard there's lead in the pipes here, so the baby might come up with some birth defects because he's trying to, you know, he doesn't want this child born of incest to be come into the world. Oh, oh CJ, Sean, Sean. I'm this is all hypothetical because I'm just wondering oh. why he, well, Sean made Tawana get an abortion in right. secret and not, but not Selena, right? Because that's your cousin, so you should be more yeah. concerned about that child's health and safety. For whatever reason, you got Tawana to get an abortion. If you didn't want to get in trouble or whatever, it's like, forget the getting in trouble part, which you should still be concerned about. This is a product of incest. Now, Sean was married, but prior to his marriage, he had children with two other women who were members of the church, including his wife, while Selena was pregnant. So while Selena was pregnant, another baby was born who was his wife's child, as well as another unidentified person in the, in the Crestview home, which is where the, where the, where the house was, um, where they all stayed. That's crazy. So somebody else in the house got pregnant and had the baby. So when you asked earlier about the grand the grandchildren, they were they yeah. the uh Sarita Smith's grandchildren are Sean Smith's children. And those children, one of them was by another church member and by his wife, who was a church member before becoming his wife. So he is fully 
using his but mom's I mean, church. Like, is it his grand? I'm saying like, is it his grandchildren? Like, I mean, like, oh, okay. So it was no incest. It, I'm talking about incest. I'm talking about kids that were born. Well, the only product of incest that we know of would have been Selena Mays' child, which yeah. we don't know where she is or her child. But that child... And that was restricted to him, too, because I'm sure there was other... I'm sure they have other kids. Yes. And his other grandchildren, so... And now, and I was thinking about that as well. Like, what's it? What, they, if they're all in this space... And he's going crazy like this in this house. And he's going crazy, and then maybe he has a sibling that's also going... It's like, what is what is happening here? <laughs> like, what is happening here? Yeah. Nasty. Nasty work. Yeah. So, Sean Smith was absolute absolute dirtbag, just running through his mom's church and doing awful things and seducing... And one of the women he married, so I guess that's consensual, but the ages and the, I mean, he was treating all these women like his playthings, basically, because his mom was the church leader. This is a power, it was classic textbook power dynamic yeah. situation. Almost 30 years later, the case is still cold. Selena is still missing. And if she ran off on her own, then she would not have gotten very far, mainly because she was nine months pregnant and she required a hospital to give birth at or perform a C-section. If either of those things need to happen, she was just weeks away from them happening, and she was 12 years old, and it was winter. So she, she would have been found dead in the woods. Like, if she, if she just ran away and, like, fell victim to the cold of that night, she would have been found because she wouldn't have gotten that far. The fact I mean, that she disappeared, that... it just tells me she was, she was taken somewhere. The search was handicapped by her father, CJ, with the fact that he didn't immediately reveal that Selena was pregnant, as I said earlier. Because this would have completely transformed the search because expectant mothers are at high risk of going missing from the father of the child. This would have expanded the scope, of the, ang- the scope and the angle of the investigation and may have resulted in more viable information being uncovered. Because the police and the detectives would have gone, we need to know who the father is. So we need to know who has access to this house, where Selena Mays like to hang out at. You know, they started looking at, you know... Uh, surveillance footage of skating rinks in Camden, New Jersey, they would have tried harder to be like, we need to find out who this father is because if she's pregnant and she's missing, it's very likely that whoever the father of that child is, is involved in this. But they didn't know that because her dad didn't say that out of the gates. So they're just looking for a missing 12 year old, which is a very different investigation than looking for a missing pregnant woman. Now, although we can only speculate on the reasoning behind CJ and the church, not being forthright with information about Selena, it is strange and it looks very bad that you're not telling the whole story to the people that are responsible for finding this little girl. That you're withholding and hiding information is weird. It makes you look bad. CJ was at one point looked at as being the father of Selena's child, but he had proved that he had a vasectomy a few years prior. And it is true that vasectomies can be reversed, but his doctor proved his statement to be true. So they did look at her father, which when I first started reading the story, I looked at him, too, because just the, the whole chaos of how he ended up with custody of Selena. But CJ saying, I had a vasectomy. I can't have kids. So the, I wouldn't not just I wouldn't rape my daughter, but I could not be the father of her child for sure because I had a vasectomy. Now, I'm sure he also denied that, too. But that being his. Him even having to go that far of like, instead of just being, having, be, being able to go, how dare you? I would never, he had to go, I had a vasectomy, so she was pregnant, so I can't have kids. So that's why I'm not the guy. Well, and this, this is her father. This place, you gotta, yeah, but this place, you gotta kind of make sure you, you gotta, you gotta check, no you, gotta, yeah, you gotta cross yourself completely <laughs> off. I get it, I get it. It's like, I gotta bring the medical records out. So, yeah, so he, so CJ, who was Selena's father, had a vasectomy, so Unless he had the vasectomy reverse, which is possible, um, the doctor, but the doctor did vouch for his statements. And so he could not be the father of Selena's unborn child because he had a vasectomy. So that kind of scratches out her father, which is a crazy thing to say and have to say. Now, hospitals in the area were also checked to see if anyone who fits Selena's description was admitted, but it turned up nothing. Reverend Sarita was more concerned about the reputation of her church than finding Selena. There has been a long-standing rumor that Selena's disappearance was related to the cult-like church run by her aunt. You know, so so far this is just rumblings. Nobody has proof. But what I will say is, if we're speculating about people getting involved and her being uh, uh, escorted out of the house in the middle of the night before she, you know, the night she disappeared, Sean Smith is Sarita Smith's son. She's the runner of the church. If anybody 
was to find out that Sean Smith was the father, it would cause irreparable damage to this church. So to me, that says Sarita Smith has a vested interest in this child not being identified who the father is, maybe not even being born. Protect her son. And if you are a person who runs a church, you have all kind of people that will do anything for you, devotees and everything like that. You might, we could be talking about Sean Smith and he, and, and, um, and his mother, and they might've had no direct hand in the reason that Selena Smith, that Selena Mays disappeared. But one of their church disciples could have done this. Cause she has a, de- yeah. a devoted membership of, of a flock of people who you go, Hey man, this girl needs to disappear. And they would do that for her. Allegedly. So on Thursday, January 29th, 1998, Sarita's son, 23 year old Sean Smith was arrested on sexual assault charges. He sexually assaulted two girls starting at the ages of 13 and 14. The first victim he assaulted from 1992 to 1994. And the second wow. victim from 1993 to 1995. In the midst of this, he fathered five children by four different mothers, which hey. most of, if not all, were members of the church. It is also not clear if the children he fathered were from underage girls. So he was sexually assaulting and raping underage girls, but it's, it's not clear in, the, in what I was able to find if those underage girls bore children or if he just had children with adult women that we know of but he this had five children with four you, different women this man having a good little time you couldn't tell me you can't tell me his mom didn't know i just I, no I have a hard time believing that all the women weren't no like way. oh here comes sean he's a player da, 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 this da, da, da. Oh, he, he works player, in the music industry gross. not like I'm just saying he married one there. He had children with other adult members. No, 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 of the, I get what you're but you know what I'm saying? Like he probably carried hey, himself yeah, yeah, like yeah, on some slick sick. shit. And yeah, for sure. yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. So police had declined to comment on whether this, whether these cases were connected to the Selena Mays disappearance. Now in the 30 years since this case took place, pastor Sarita Smith has since passed away. Police are still looking okay. for community members and people who worked at the church who haven't shared to come forward with no luck so far. And um, just as a little bit of an update, Selena would have been 40 years old or she would have been in, wow. Selena would have, she would have been in her forties and her child would be in her late 20 in their late twenties pushing 30. So, so this thing doesn't even, this church doesn't even exist like this. It, 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 it went belly up. The church folded. All, the church doesn't exist anymore. Mm, yeah. After, after she passed away, not even just that, just some years after the, the in the midst of the investigations and people were, didn't find that, the way that it was handled, cool, finding out about Sean okay. Smith, it all slowly crumbled mm-hmm. her and empire. Gotcha. And then she died gotcha. some gotcha. years gotcha. after this. Yeah. Um, a forensic artist at Nick Mick created an age progression photo of what Selena Mays would look like today. And that is available for viewing online. Anybody, anytime anybody wants to t- uh, take a look, you could pull it up on Google right now. Um, and so she's never been found. That leaves hope that it's possible that she, you know, was shipped out to Mexico to live a life of anonymity. Um, I don't know how likely that is because it's been so long. My theory is two of the um, persisting theories is one, Selena Mays died during childbirth and they covered it up. They buried her in a backyard or threw her in the river. Selena Mays. Hold on. I'm sorry. Say that again. Two theories. One of two of the theories that persist for me one, that Selena Mays died during childbirth. She was 12 years old. Um, I don't know if a 12-year-old body is the most equipped to give birth just because you can menstruate. I don't know if your hips, your pelvis, all those things. So I think it's possible that either she or both her and the baby may have died during, died during childbirth. Um, and I say that when I say that, I mean they tried to give birth at home. I feel like they'd maybe tried to give birth at home to keep it private, not, you know, and not let the public find out that this 12 year old had a baby. I feel like they tried to have uh, the, a childbirth at home. Selena Mays died and they disposed of her and the baby, whether a river burying her, whatever, driving her out of the, out of town. I think that's possible. And I also think that it's possible that um, she was just killed and, because they didn't want this to come out. You know, there's also some stories about 
um, sex trafficking. She had the baby and they gave her away to somebody, you know, in, in that regard. But I really feel like because she was taking medicine and going to doctor's appointments and things like that, I think that she went into labor. They didn't want, and, and then Sarita Smith and her family's there, and they're like, "Listen, this will look bad on the church if this baby people this hit if this makes the news a, a newspaper. Let's just do a home birth." And I don't think they were equipped. It's all speculation, obviously. I'm just I'm just spitballing. I don't think they were equipped. I think that she had a a rough birth. I think that they maybe lost her and the baby, and they disposed of everything and said she disappeared. Came up with the whole story. Hmm. That's what I think happened. I don't know if dad knew, though. I don't know if the dad knew, know something. I don't know. That I don't know. You know? I don't know how. He was convicted how... on charges outside of nothing to do with this, just sexual assault charges. He has no reason to. No, her dad? Oh, her dad, CJ. Yeah, Serena's I don't dad. Yeah, I don't know. He's the, he was the one. I don't, it's, it's, it's hard for me to believe that even if that's, let's go with your theory where she gave birth to the child and she passed away and they disposed of her body. And he doesn't know that. But who's to say he doesn't well, know? He just doesn't yeah, yeah. care about his daughter. And that's he insane. was a devo- devoted member of the church. This church saved his life, know, turned around devoted. his drug that's... addiction and all these things before he got his daughter back. That was where he, got, he where he met his wife, where he had his kids, where he lived, where he worked. His sister was who, you know, reintroduced him to God. You know, he had a strong relationship with God. He was a devoted church member. And I think that he maybe chose to protect the church over what he may have been able to be convinced of. Allegedly, this is all alleged what I'm saying. But what he may have been able to be convinced of was a terrible accident. She died. She was giving birth and she died. That's not our fault, CJ. We cannot let the church go down because of an accident. This is what God wanted. And in that case, I'll, that's different I don't than think... some horrible, evil plan that he's going along with. If it was an accident, yeah. that's why I think it's what happened. And I think that if that's the case, him wanting um, custody of his daughter was his was his was his sister's idea. Mm. Had nothing to do with him choosing to want to be, have custody of his child. Have wanted more members of the congregation. Bingo. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Fully possible. I, I, I don't I don't disagree with that. Again, this is all speculation. All we know for a fact is that Selena Mason, her child, disappeared and we're never sick. seen that's again. It's been 30 years. Sick. That's what we know. He knows. I'm not. He knows. He knows. For me, that theory makes the most sense. There's other theories out there that make sense to other people, I'm sure. But to me, an accident happening during the childbirth of a 12-year-old. He knows. I think that that's the most likely. And I think that that, as weird as it sounds, I can sleep better at night thinking that a father tried to do what was right or what he thought was right by, you know, not aborting his grandchild and something bad happened. And he goes, it was an accident. We can't, I don't want my pastor to go to my sister and my pastor to go to prison because of an accident. This was an accident. Like we were all there. We saw, we all tried. We had the warm towels and I was holding her hand and we said all the nice things. And she just, she just had an unfortunate, terrible childbirth because she was 12 years old and she, and she passed. And that's not a crime. So we're cool with just saying, hey, man, we woke up in the morning to make breakfast, and she was gone. And now they don't speak to him. They don't answer questions. They don't talk to the police. Sarita Smith is has passed away, and they can't get answers out of anybody. So it feels he like a take-it-to-your-graves type of scenario. For sure. So, he knows something. Yeah. He knows something. But, yeah, that was the story of Selena Mays, 12 years old, pregnant, nine months, disappears on December in 1996 and is never seen again. That was crazy, man. But I, he know the the dad knows something. Dad knows something. Well, somebody knows, knows something. something. There's a father out there of a child. That, that, whether we think that's Sean Smith or what, somebody, uh, I, of course, somebody knows something. It'll come out. Somebody, it, the truth will come out. The truth always come out. It may Hopefully. be 20, 30 some years from now, but truth come out. She'll, they'll find her body as, at some point. If, she, if, if that was, if she was, if she did die at childbirth and they buried her body somewhere, because it's probably somewhere on that property somewhere. I would, I mean, if, I don't know. The father I just think went that, to the police station. And they didn't what? have the police come to his house. Yeah. Went to the police station. Now, I'm not saying that means that the her body is on the property. Right, but right, right. It's, we, it's that's a weird thing when you start putting all this stuff. When you start to try to make a narrative, if we're saying they disposed of her body, 
that does make it weird that he that he went to the police station and didn't call them over to the house to be able to come check the scene. Maybe there was fucking bloody towels everywhere from a messy childbirth that went wrong, and they're like, "I'm gonna go to the police station, and we and you guys clean this up," because he didn't go. So she went. She disappeared on Sunday. They woke up on Monday. Their story is they woke up on Monday. She was gone. They didn't file a missing persons report until that Tuesday. So a whole 24 hours. And on Sunday, the evening service was canceled. So, scenario. Sunday evening, she goes into childbirth. Sunday night, she dies, giving birth. The next day, which is Monday, they realize, like, she, she, you you know, labor throughout the night or whatever. They're like, I'm calling them, man. She's dead. The baby's dead. Uh, 24 hours of panic on that Monday. Like, oh, what do we do? Let's get a plan together, whatever. The next day, hey, man, what, well, that Monday's like, well, we got to go. We can't not say she's missing. We have to, if, if people find out she's missing, we look bad. If we say she's missing, we look fine. The next day, her dad goes down to the police station, files a missing person's report. This is hypothetical. This is a scenario I made up, but I'm just taking all the pieces of the story that I know, and I'm saying, look, here's a narrative. And that narrative to me, Adds up in some spots. It adds yeah. up more than this 12-year-old girl woke up in the middle of the night and was like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Nine months pregnant, cold, no money, no car. So that's already, for me, that's out. That, that, that scenario's scrapped. I just don't see that being at all a possibility that she just got up and left because she didn't want to be there anymore. Scrap that one. I don't know if you scrapped the one where she died giving birth, and then the family had to cover it up to try to protect the church. I've heard yeah, the church is doing yeah. a lot crazier things to protect the church. That's true. Yeah. I, so, I, um, I can't I can't say. I, obviously, that and her just leaving her own is far less possible, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't scratch it. I don't know. Maybe she could have just like, I don't, I don't want to fucking out of here. I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's possible, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, uh, like I said, that was the story of Selena Mays. Um, absolute tragic story but before we get out of here Fran um, have you seen anything good have you um, uh, any st- recommendations watched, for people I watched this show called Sprint it's a Netflix series on uh, Netflix about um, the sport of track and field mm. uh, m- it focused mainly on like the 100 meter and 200 meter yard dash but my dad was a a track star in his high school days and we used to watch, you know, track and fit all the time. So I'm a huge fan of it as well. And I kind of keep up with some of the races. Yeah. You used to keep up with, I like, used to be able to tell me the sprinters, like they oh, were like yeah. basketball players. Like, yeah. Because like, cause we used to watch all the time Olympics and then we used to watch the world championships. And there's a, it's a thing about a sport like track and field where it's, it's like, it's like tennis. It's like, um, What's another one sport? On one. Boxing. It's one yeah, it's on one like, where like I'm the best. I'm the best, but it's also about preparation. It's about determination. It's about the mental the part of it where it's like every there's no team. So it's like if you lose, you lost. It's cause you you it's cause you didn't prepare like you like you're supposed to. Or a person was just fast mm, yeah. And it, by it being and it, by it being a sport where you're running, there's always uh, um Somebody who was like, and like basketball, when like Kobe was at the top, it's like LeBron is up next, but he still got like another five years to take over the sport. Right. Track and field is like, we're yeah, both you're the best right now, yes. but you got a guy that's coming out of college who's who's 18, who's fast as shit, and like is like second. And has time. Place, yeah. And on your heels, like you don't have, it's even yeah. if you fall off as far as training, that person's going to take over the sport. Yeah. And then they train in like, they train like boxes where it's like, oh, a race is not until. October, but we train from March to September for right. this one race. And it's like, and, and it's, it's, it's crazy what goes into a sport like that. And Noah Lyles is a guy who is like this very um, loud and, and in front. He wants to camera in front of him. Like now he got, he got videos that's going on now. He's like Yu-Gi-Oh cards in his pocket and shit. He's like, oh, he wants he's to be bringing some sauce to it. He's yeah. He's, he's one. He wants to be, he loves it. He loves it. He, he talks shit and he's, in front of camera, and there's another guy. Do you think that's a Usain Bolt effect? Because that was very much... It's funny. This is another one of those yeah. subculture conversations where you go, who is he idolizing in track and field that that's the personality that he wants to take on? Is like he right. wants to be Probably. like a 
bo- boisterous because you know you saying come out pointing, but you doing say, all yeah, the stretches you, and everything. Right, but you saying wasn't a trash talker. He was just like he just come out and do a point a dance, whatever. This dude, he yeah. talks to you like, no, I'm the I'm the. Best. Oh, he talks. He's like he's like, he's like no, I'm the best. He'll put up oh, times sure. like no, this is my time. I'm be I'm the best. And like it gets it gets heated a little bit. There's a guy who's who's was who was faster than him, and but he's the quiet type. He's like. I just come and show up. He can have that, but I come and show up and I, I race. And then something happened where, like, he ended up losing. He didn't qualify for one of the races. And the guy, mm. and you know, and I was like, damn, he ain't even make it. You can't talk shit because you ain't even here. No, so I didn't know this like, kind of shit was going on in track and field. Yeah, yeah it's, bro, it's, I, when I watched it, and I love it because it's like, it's crazy because, like, you see the, it goes, it talk about Shakira Richardson, talk about her and her, yeah. her, what she went through as far as when she was on top and then they, Went on top of her when she lost, and then she had to kind of rebuild that up again and be at the top. And is they talk about Jamaica, how Jamaica, like track and field in Jamaica, it's like, uh, it's like it's this it's the sport. It's yeah. what's your famous? Well, it's not like a basketball player, like a basketball player or football player here. It's like that here is we like run. a track and field star there. Yeah, they run like that's what Jamaica's. That's what they're known for. So it's like whenever the Olympics come or World Championships, it's the U.S. and it's Jamaica. And it's like they go head to head every time, and it's it's crazy, man. It's to see the training they go into. It's and it's a lot of shit where there's groups of training, and then people will leave that that training group, and yeah. then those people used to be teammates. Now they not now they not cool anymore. Now it's like no, I want they left, so they. I mean, we cool, but nah. When it comes to when we get on this track, it's like I want to turn their head off. It's crazy, man. I love it. I got to get my dad to watch it because I know he'll love it. But to see something like that, I just. I bench the shot of that because I, I loved every minute of it, man. I was like, I'm, and I still upset because like my dad didn't. Again, this is the conversation we had before, where it's like my dad didn't push me to do anything. He didn't, right? And that would that would have been one thing where I thought I think I would I would have been good at it, but like I think I would have had the potential to be good. But it's one of those things where like I can run fast, but once you learn technique and shit, I think I would have been, yeah. yeah. I I think I would have killed it. But yeah. he didn't push me to do because he did it, so he didn't push me to do something where it's like I did it, but I don't care if you do it or not. And I wish you would have done that. Well, after I and, saw that, I was like, I wish you would have done that. And track and field is one of those ones where if you don't have it, which is funny that your your dad did do it, but I guess he just didn't want to be uh like a helicopter parent. Yeah. But like if your friends aren't doing track and field, I don't think kids naturally gravitate towards track and field. It's like soccer right. to me. Like, yeah. all of my friends aren't playing soccer. They're playing basketball and football. So, like, right. I'm either not going to play a sport or I'm going to play the sport that my friends are playing unless I have an outside influence, somebody that I respect exactly. or hold in high right. regard saying, you exactly. know what's fun? And you get to travel on the buses and go do all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, they all travel. The track they, meets. They, do, they travel everywhere. It's like it's like, it's like, like you being in, like, in, in the other sport where you guys yeah. travel, you compete, you win medals and shit, and you get endorsements and shit like that. Like, the people in Jamaica, they, they have nice houses and shit. Like, they yeah. are, like, the shit. <laughs> there, yeah. like for being, f- it's a fast. real sport. But it's I don't a real, think it's a, a real sport. Yes, I don't 100%. think you treat it that way naturally as a kid. Like I don't think in middle school and high school there you're you like, know. I want to be a shock putter. You're like yeah. unless it's like a family tradition or right. something like. That. I don't think I don't think kids just fall into track and field. No, some, and I, some kids and do. Think, I'm sure, but like for right, the most part, right. And I think that's what kind of what this documentary was doing was like, no, this can you can travel. You can get all the shit you can get playing other sports. You could do that with track and field. Because mm-hmm. usually in high school, track and field was like football players did it to stay in shape. In the off season. Yep. In the off season. Mm-hmm. That's what really what it was for. But yep. nobody, I I don't know anybody who was like, no, I'm trying I'm to, the star of the track. I'm there was nobody do. walking around my school. 100. I went nobody. to two high schools. At neither high school, there was nobody who was like, yo, I'm the fastest <laughs> dude on the on the track team. It was like, right, and nobody, right. he wasn't like getting clout or, you know, praise for right. that. Right. But I yeah, guess so. probably in the right circles, you would if, you know, but. There was nobody at my school that was like the probably the, again like you said the fastest person on the track and field team at the schools I went to was probably like the running back on the football team. Right. Yeah. And he's like, I don't care. I'm just ready I for don't football. Give a shit. I'm stuff. just trying to stay. <laughs> I'm just trying to be up on my game and stay in shape until football season starts. Nobody right. was like trying to do this shit for real. Like, go you you can get you can get a, a scholarship on track and field. You can fucking go to Olympics with. Mel- I mean, like everybody wants to. That's like a. Yeah, it doesn't matter what sport you play. Going to the Olympics and winning a gold medal for your country is is a big fucking deal. Yes, and I think that with this, you kind of it opens your eyes to like it's not just people go running on a track and then that's it. Like it's a whole bunch of shit, and it's like USA worry about Jamaica, Jamaica worries about the USA. Like no, we gonna we gonna whip them when it comes to 
and they and they compete all year. It's not just the Olympics. They compete. Yeah, all I didn't the, even the know trials, that. The qualifying. Yeah, the I didn't even know. Like I, they yeah. compete all year, every year. I just thought it was like they race, and then every four years is like they and go into it. the Olympics, and that's it. It's like no, nah, yeah. they compete all the time, and then it's just a whole bunch of like times and shit like that. And then you they got Usain Bolt on there. They got like some big people who were at that time they was the shit right. on the show, and then Usain Bolt was just. He was like, and he was in another. He was a different. That's LeBron James. Different. Yeah, man. It was. He was. Different. That's Michael Phelps. That's Usain Bolt. Is as some people again. Like I don't know any other. Uh, there was a guy Tyson Gay, right? That was a guy that Tyson when, Gay. Yeah, but he when, was. He was. He was, he was trying juicing. to compete. He was. He was oh, juicing. He, was, mm. he, was ju- he beat Usain Bolt one year, but he was juicing that year. Damn. Yeah, that's the only <laughs> other guy. Because, but the only reason I know him is because yeah. he was trying to beat Usain Bolt. Like right. he, Usain yep. Bolt's gravitational pull. Made no. me know somebody else's name, but outside of that, it's like Usain Bolt, and I don't know any like Jackie Joyner Kersey. I don't know. I don't even know if that's a. She might have been a long distance runner or something yeah. like or Flo Jo. Like I have these Flo names jo. in my Flo head. Flo jo. You got to be. Up in, yeah. It's generational. It's like gener- right. If you're right. a track and field star that everybody knows, or like an Olympian that everybody knows, you're yeah. generational. Simone right. Biles, Flo, Michael right. Phelps. Those people have records. Flo Jo record hasn't been beaten yet. Yes. Usain Bolt, I believe, hasn't been re- beaten yet. But like that dude ran. He ran so f- like Usain Bolt was. F- was the fastest person ever, and then that dude ran fast, and it was like, something, that don't even, <laughs> something's not right. It was yeah. insane, bro. <laughs> You're not supposed to beat this guy. If you not beat him, him, and he beat him, and it was like, no, nah, man, something ain't something's right, Something's up. Because <laughs> this the fastest we ever so seen a human run. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you say Bolt is like almost seven, he's like six fucking, yeah. he's like six, eight he's or something like that. He's giant, got long yeah, legs, he got long, long strides, legs, and like, this wait. dude. <laughs> nah, if you beat him. Because we tested six him foot. too. <laughs> you know they tested Usain Bolt. He was so yeah, fast. Man. You know they tested him. It was like, we tested him. So if you that beat him, you beat no him, way. Man. And I, no I went to watch that race and I went, he was, and that dude was born. I go, you see, you go like, nah, he was on, <laughs> the way he was running that motherfucker yeah, was on something. His legs, his no thighs way. looked like pit bulls. He had like, like he had two pit bulls over his knees. Yeah, that, that man, was, he was juicing. That shit was crazy. Right? That shit was wild. But yeah, man, if you anybody in the track and field, definitely go watch Sprint. They got season two coming up. I'm excited because they got season two coming up. And that's going to cover the Olympics because Olympics is about to start. So that's going to cover that. So I'm excited, man. I, it's been a while since I've seen something on Netflix where I'm like this excited to watch. Where yeah. like, it's something I love, and it was like I loved every minute of it. it. Was it was it was good. So definitely check it out if you're in the track and field. Sprint, okay, yeah. But and before yeah. I go, I started watching the show Supercell, which is ah, also on Netflix. On my, how is it? I watched the first episode. I like it a lot. It's like all like something happens or black people are just getting superpowers. I, and it's British. It's, it's, it's a UK show, yeah. which I think is interesting. And I'm, I'm interested to like dive in further to see why that is the case. Yeah. What's happening? Why is like what, what's the message of the show? But the fact also it's called Supercell. Yeah. We got them Supercells, man. Yeah. And things and like that in it. So Supercell. So like makes it kind of urban, I guess, is the point. Mm. But it's all black people getting superpowers in the show. And they get some mm. interesting superpowers, yeah. um, at least the first episode. The graphics are not the best, but okay. you just got to, like, get that out of your head. And outside yeah. of that, the show, the first episode was was pretty good. So I'll the watch gra- more. That's crazy to hear in, like, 2024. Like, what do you mean, like, the... It just, just... you know, how it looks a little cheap. It just hmm. looks like they didn't have the budget okay. to the do budget. the crazy... Okay. You know, because yeah, yeah. it's, like, electric powers and super speed. It just, the shit doesn't look like Marvel. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Like it just gotcha, looks a little yeah. bit like, yeah. right, you know, um, probably but it's, it's probably more relatable a little bit. Like if people had powers, that's not stupid. That's but not that's why I love misfits. Cause like misfits for the most part did a lot of practical, right? They yeah. were like, Oh, I'm, uh, I'm really strong or like I can become two Nobody's people. Nobody's flying in misfits. Yeah. No, yeah. No. And in, <laughs> in, in misfits, nobody's like, Oh, I can make tornadoes. Yeah, it's, like, flying, it's like, yeah, just, yeah. yeah it's, it's like, like not, you have a, somebody who's mind reader and it's, yeah, it's like crazy it's strength. Like that shit is more, I get that. If, if we was to have super come wake up one morning and have superpowers, that was, that is what a human should have. Right. Nobody Things that's like your brain like, becomes yeah. more powerful. It's like, no, right. now I can make all the lights in the world go off or something. You know, I yeah. guess that's a little bit more. You know, anyway, I can become seven feet tall. Yeah. That shit is like you now that shit you got to have the budget for that. Right. And now it's yeah. the misfits went we don't have the budget for that. We're going to keep everybody in these little orange jumpsuits <laughs> and this guy is he 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 can be stabbed a bunch and he just he can't die. Just don't we can die, we yeah. can do that without CGI. This show is like we might right. not have the budget, but this guy can make electricity and this guy is super fast and like so we got to like be that. able to so that's what I'm, I'm like saying. That. That's why it's like, that's yeah, why yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not using it as a knock. I'm just saying I want people to right. know going into it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to go, oh, that looked a little bit cheap, but just focus on the story. <laughs> right. Because so far, hey, the it was good. 
Netflix was it was this close. You almost hit the hit the cancel on. I almost canceled it, bro. <laughs> but I've been on there and they got some shit. I've been like, oh, damn, I add this. They've been coming I've been strong. adding a lot of shit. I've been like, oh man, this one show I can't remember the name of it, but like it's about um a judge who something happened with a Your black Honor. kid and like. Your Honor. That is that is that what is that what the one you was talking about? Yeah, it started off on okay. Showtime, but Netflix oh, okay. bought it. And they got a second season. I haven't watched the second season yet, but I, I love the that. first I've, season. I've been okay. I've been waiting to watch that. So I, I love the first season yet. of that show. It's so crazy. Um, yeah, man. Netflix. Yeah. I'm like, they ain't pumping them out right now. I was like, all right. No, nah, Netflix okay. is on. Netflix has been on a little bit of a tear. Uh, unrelated, it's a it's an older movie, but it's on Netflix currently. I um I had a movie night with my girlfriend, and we watched uh, A Simple Favor. Okay. It, it got a little weird at the end and campy in a weird way, like it got a little silly. But leading up to it, it it was like. It was a cool movie. I liked it. It was a little whodunit, a little gone girlish. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it got a little silly at the end, but the ride was still fun. I still recommend it to people because it was a good little whodunit type of thing. It okay. got a little silly towards the end, but not silly enough that I checked out. Just silly where I went, oh, I, this is a different tone that I've been watching for the whole movie. Yeah. But I liked it. So I recommend that to people, too. That's on Netflix. But, yeah. Hey folks, this has been another episode of a. Oh, I got a question though. Oh, go you for gonna it. Watch, you gonna watch Beverly Hills Cop Four or whatever the fuck it is? Axel. Is it Beverly? Is it Beverly Hills Cop Axel? Oh, maybe I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I just know whatever Beverly it is. Hills Cop. I don't know. Beverly what, Hills Cop Four. Uh, yeah. yeah, Beverly yeah. Hills Cop Four. I mean, I listen. I love Eddie Murphy. I don't know if I've seen an Eddie Murphy movie recently, but I saw him in Comedians in Cars. What is it? Comedians getting coffee in cars with Jerry with Seinfeld. Seinfeld? Yeah, it's one of the best episodes with Eddie Murphy on there. He's so naturally funny. Mm. My issue was like, I can't watch Martin now. We've had this discussion. Something's yeah. off with Martin. He's sick. I know what he's saying, but like something's off. Yeah, I don't know if it's because he's chubby. I don't know what it is. He's not. He doesn't act like Martin. And so I don't want to see Eddie Murphy not acting like Eddie Murphy. But also, I don't know okay. what that means because I've seen Eddie Murphy be loud. Eddie Murphy's more talented than Martin Lawrence. So I've seen Eddie Murphy be quiet in a movie. I've seen Eddie Murphy be loud and crazy. Daddy daycare. So I don't have any expectations. He might come out in this movie and just be a charming, slightly funny action hero. And I don't think that would be a bad thing. Martin is like, everything I see him in is like, damn, man, that's not Martin. Yeah. And I don't want to have that feeling. I'm gonna, my point is, to answer your question, yes, I'm going to watch it. Okay. Because I don't see any signs that Eddie Murphy is like, not Eddie Murphy anymore. Yeah. If that makes okay, sense. Okay, I get that. Yeah. Well, I don't like I don't want to watch somebody in something that I haven't seen in a while and I'm like, damn, man, that's that one hurt to watch well, him you know that. Well, you know what? I'll report back to you on the next episode because I'm going to see what's name today? Bad Boys. Bad Boys, because I haven't seen it yet. And okay. I, so I'm I'm going to see how Please. And I'll, don't and forget, I'll, I want because okay. Fran is the biggest Martin Lawrence fan in the world. <laughs> We've had this discussion about Martin yeah. in the in the most recent years. Yeah. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on what yeah. he looks like on the big screen in 2024. Yes. So I'm 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 excited to see how that goes. How because I've heard some good reviews. It was like I heard it was fun. When, if if some if if he is going through something because he is, they did a good job at disguising that in the movie. Okay. So I'll I'll see when I you'll be the judge of I'll that. Go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Fair. I'm excited to go. I would yeah. please report back. Uh, sure. But with that being said, this has been another episode of Affirmative Murder. I've been Alvin Williams, joined as always by my partner in true crime, Francel Evans, and we'll see you guys next week. Deuces.